Hello, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this episode, we're going to be measuring and inspecting the crankshaft and engine block in our Kohler K301 engine. Here are the tools we're going to be using to take our measurements today. This is a 3 to 4 inch outside micrometer. That's a 0 to 1 inch outside micrometer. This is a 1 to 2 inch outside micrometer. This is a telescoping bore gauge, and this is an expanding hole gauge. And this right here is a micrometer vise. This micrometer and this telescoping bore gauge will be used to take the measurements of the cylinder bore. This expanding hole gauge and the 0 to 1 inch um, outside micrometer will be measuring the inside diameter of the valve guides. This 1 to 2 inch micrometer will be measuring the crankshaft journal. Here's the engine block we're going to be measuring. It's important that before you begin to measure the cylinder, you thoroughly clean out the inside of the cylinder and all of your tools to make sure you get accurate measurements. We're going to be taking a total of six measurements of this cylinder bore to help us determine the overall size, the taper, and the out of round. Imagine this cylinder bore is broken up into an X and Y. X running in this direction, Y running in this direction. We're going to take three measurements in the X direction at three different depths of the cylinder. And then we're going to take three measurements in the Y at three different depths. This is what it looks like on this chart that I put together for us today. Now this engine block is a K301 12 horsepower engine. The cylinder dimensions on a new cylinder is between 3.3755 and 3.3745. The max wear limit for the cylinder is 3.378 with a max taper of 0 .002 and a max out of round of 0 .003. Again, we're going to be taking six measurements total, three measurements on the x-axis, three measurements on the y-axis. To take the measurements, we're going to be using this telescoping bore gauge. The telescoping bore gauge consists of these two spring-loaded plungers and a tightening nut down here. To use this, you insert it into the cylinder at an angle. So the tool is kind of facing like this inside the cylinder bore. Then you're going to gently tighten this screw at the top. You're going to rotate the tool like this and then pull it out. What that does is it forces these convex faces on both ends of the plungers to compress as you rotate it and it's going to find the largest dimension of the cylinder bore, like this. And that's how you do it. Now we're going to take this measurement and transfer it over to the micrometer. To use the micrometer, you want to use this torque limiting screw right here, and you're, just, you're going to put your bore gauge in between the two contact faces, and then you're going to gently turn the torque limiting nut, which is down here on the micrometer, until it clicks. You want to make sure you have both convex faces lined up on the bore gauge, right about there. Now we're going to read the measurement and see what we got. It might be hard for you to read the measurement, but our measurement is 3.3762. Now let's write down our measurement right here, 3.3762. That's our first measurement in the x-axis. Now let's get the second and third measurement. Okay, so here are the six measurements that we took. Uh, you'll notice that the second depth that I took of the y-axis, I actually crossed it off and went back and re-measured it. What happened was uh, the measurement was so radically different than the rest, I, I had to double check my work and re-measure and I discovered that while doing this I just made a slight mistake in my uh, telescoping bore gauge. So I went back, redid everything, and this is the measurement that I got. So it's always important to double check your work. So let's kind of go over this measurement my be by measurement. So again, these are the three depths at the two axes. The first measurement I got was 3.3762, x-axis, top depth. Second depth, 3.3761. Third depth, 3.3752. 
Same thing with the y-axis. I got 3.3761, 3.3769, 3.3764. Now by going to by these measurements, we can determine our out of round and taper. To get the out of round, we're going to take the difference between the x and y measurements uh, to the thousandths of an inch, which in this case, 3.376 minus 3.376 is zero. So that is n that is within spec of out of round since we're allowed three thousandths. Uh, the same thing with the second measurement, 3.376, 3.376, 3.375, 3.375. So that's um, that's about. It's about uh so it's point zero 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 eight difference between these two, so that's less than a thousandth of an inch, and again we are within spec for our out of round. Now the taper is the difference between the top depth and the bottom depth of each of the x and y axis. So in this case, uh three point three seven five uh from three point three seven six that is one thousandths of an inch, and again, we are within taper there. On the y-axis, 3.376, 3.376, that's zero taper on that end. So again, we are within spec on the taper. Our overall measurements fall underneath the max wear of 3.378. So the good news for this cylinder bore is we can keep it at standard. We do not need to machine to 10 on oversize. Uh, we just have to prepare it with a crosshatch, which we'll cover in a later video. But now let's measure the crankshaft and the valve guides. Let's measure our valve guides. To measure our valve guides, we need our hole, expanding hole gauge and a 0 to 1 inch micrometer. Now the valve guides, when they're brand new, they are reamed out to 0.3125 inches. The maximum wear limit on the intake valve brings us to a value of 0 0.3131. The maximum wear limit is for the exhaust valve is 0.3133. We want to measure our valves and we want to make sure they are within and under this specification. To use an expanding hole gauge like this one is there's a little tightening screw on the bottom which uh, pushes this plunger in and out, which in turn expands this kind of clamping set out. Uh, to do this is you want to loosen it up, stick this in a hole, and then you want to slowly tighten it while you're kind of moving this tool in and out of whatever you're measuring. You want to keep expanding this tool until there's a slight drag on the inside diameter of the object that you're measuring. When you get that very slight drag, uh, that's when you remove this and you measure this with a micron. It takes a little practice. It's kind of like using a feeler gauge. You don't want it to have too much drag or too little drag because that could throw your measurement off by a thousandth of an inch or so. So you want to just kind of practice with this and when you get a slight drag of resistance, that's when you want to pull this out and take a measurement. Here are the measurements that I got for the valve guides for both the exhaust and intake side of the valves. I got a measurement of 0.3125 inches on both the exhaust and the intake. So both these valve guides are good. I also measured, I took a couple of extra measurements at the bottom of the valve guide just to make sure that there was no taper uh, or wearing of off center of the valve guides. Now let's measure our crankshaft. Measuring the crankshaft is a lot like measuring the cylinder bore of your engine, but we don't need a telescoping bore gauge. We're going to take a to total of six measurements, three on the x-axis, three on the y-axis of the crankshaft. And that's going to do the same thing as the cylinder bore. We're going to determine the overall size, the out of round, and the taper. 
Here are the dimensions for a brand new Kohler K301 crankshaft. It should be between 1.5000 and 1.4995 inches. The max wear limit is 1.4990. The maximum out of round is 0 .0005, which is half a thousandth of an inch. And then the max taper is one thousandth of an inch. Here are the six measurements we got for this crankshaft. The first measurement on the x-axis is 1.4992, then 1.4994, and then 1.4994 again. Over on the y-axis, we've got 1.4992, 1.4990, 1.4994, the maximum out of round that we have in any of these uh, looks like the largest out of round dimension we have is .0004, which is uh, just barely underneath our maximum out of round limit. Our max taper on everything is uh, zero, so we are within specification there. And then we also are within specification for our overall size of 1.4990. So it looks like this crankshaft is good to be have a, a standard connecting rod installed. Now after you do your measurement, it's important to thoroughly inspect your block and your crankshaft before going any further. We want to inspect our crankshaft journal here and make sure there are no deep gouges or scratches, anything that catches on the fingernail. Make sure that's 100% smooth. We also want to check our threads for our flywheel nut, make sure those are all in good shape. We want to check our key and our keyway, make sure those are good. We also want to check our bearing surfaces, which is this side right here and this side right here. We want to make sure there are no uh, deep cuts or grooves or anything that catches on your fingernails. Uh, some of the dark marks that you see here is just discoloration from heat, possibly from uh, low lubrication or running the engine at a high heat. And some of it's also just normal from normal use. Coming over on this side, make sure this uh, journal, there's a little bit of uh, galling here, a little bit of uh, corrosion, but I think I can clean that up with some uh, Scotch-Brite pad. We also want to check uh, the gear teeth on the crankshaft. This is what turns the camshaft. We want to make sure all the teeth are in good shape. There's no broken teeth or any chips like that. Also moving to the engine block. We want to do the same with the cylinder bore, kind of run our hand down it, make sure there are no uh, deep scratches or cuts, anything that uh, catches our fingernail. We want to make sure that's in good shape, which it is. After that, now that we know the condition of our cylinder bore, our crankshaft, all of our bearing surfaces, our valve guides, we know the dimensions, now we are ready to select uh, the proper size parts that we can use for the rebuild. For this particular engine, I can use a standard size piston and a standard size connecting rod. I hope you found this video helpful. To buy high quality aftermarket parts for engines such as this Kohler K301, like the piston and the connecting rod I'm talking about, about, please check out our website, isavetractors.com. We develop and sell high quality aftermarket parts for your vintage and obsolete small engines, such as your Kohler K series, your Tecumseh cast iron engines, your Briggs and Stratton cast iron engines, as well as your Wisconsin and Onan engines. Once again, my name is Norman. Thanks for watching.